where we left off in the last video. We were focused on surface two, this blue kind of outside, or I guess the blue side of our little kind of chopped cylinder that we're dealing with. And we found a decent parameterization. And then given that parameterization, we were able to come up with ds for that surface, for surface two, it just simplified. All this business simplified to one, so it just equaled du dv. And so now we are ready to evaluate the surface integral, this surface integral right over here. We're ready to evaluate. We are ready to evaluate the surface integral over surface two of z ds. And it's going to be equal to a double integral over u and v. And so let's write this. I'm going to do two different colors for the different variables of integration. So yellow for one, and maybe purple for the other. Purple for the other, and we're taking it. We're taking the integral of z, and in our parameterization, z is equal to v. So this right over here is the same thing as v. So we can write v right over there, and we already saw that ds is the same thing as du dv, or we could even write that as dv dv du. We could just switch the order right over there, and I'm going to choose to integrate with respect to dv first, to do dv on the inside integral, and then d do du on the outside integral. And the reason why I'm choosing to integrate with respect to v first is based on the bounds of our parameters. v is bounded on the low end by 0. It's bounded on the low end by 0. But on the high end, it's bounded by essentially a function of u. Its upper bound changes. Because you see right over here, depending where we are, dep it, it de depending on what our x value is, it essentially we have a different, we have a different height that we need to get to. And since it's a function of u, we can integrate with respect to v. Our boundaries are going to be 0 and 1 minus cosine of u. 1 minus cosine of u. This, all of this business in magenta will give us a function of u. And then we'll be able to integrate with respect to u. And u just goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so that will give us a nice straightforward a nice straightforward number, assuming all of this works out OK. And so this is simplified to a straight up double integral. And now we're ready to compute. And so let me write the outside part. The outside part is from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, it's du. And so the inside part, the antiderivative of v is v squared over 2. And we are going to evaluate that from 0 to 1 minus cosine of u. And so this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to, once again, the outside integral, 0, 2 pi. I'll write du. I'll write du right over here. And so we're, this is going to be equal to all of this. Let me just write 1 half. And actually, I can even write the 1 half out here. I'll just write 1 half times 1 minus cosine u squared. Well, that's just going to be 1 squared minus 2 times the product of both of these. So minus 2 cosine of u. Actually, let me give, me, let me give myself a little bit more real estate here. Let me give myself a little bit more real estate. 1 minus 2 cosine of u plus plus cosine of u squared, cosine of u squared, minus this thing evaluated at 0, which is just going to be 0. So we just get that right over there. And then we have, and then we have du. And so now we can evaluate this. We can integrate this with respect to u. So let's do that. So the anti, and I'll just let me just take the one half on the outside just to simplify things. So we have the one half out here, and so if you take the antiderivative with res of this with respect to u, you still have this one half out front. So this is equal to one half, and we're going to take the antiderivative. So let's do it carefully. Actually, let me just simplify it so it's easier to take the antiderivative. So it's going to be one half times the integral. I'll break this up into three different integrals. One half times times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 du, which is just du, minus 2 minus 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine of u du, that's this term right over here, plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine squared u. And cosine squared u, it's not so easy to take the antiderivative of that. So we'll use one of our trig identities. I always forgot the for, forget the formal name. I just think of it as the one that takes us from cosine squared to cosine of 2u. So this 
trig identity, this thing right over here is the same thing. This comes straight out of our trigonometry class. This comes, this is one half plus one half plus one half cosine of two theta plus one half cosine of two, or I should say not theta, cosine of two u. So this last integral right over here, I can rewrite it as, I can rewrite it as, I'll just rewrite it in that same color actually, one half plus one half cosine of two u, and then we have our final we have our final du. And now, and then let me close the brackets. And all of that is times 1 half. So this thing right over here, cosine squared u, just a trig identity, takes us to that. Now this is pretty easy to evaluate. The antiderivative of this is just going to be u evaluated at 2 pi and 0. So it essentially just, let me just write it out. This, this part right over here is just u evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. It's 2 pi minus 0. It just gets evaluated and we get 2 pi. So out front you have your 1 half and then times 2 pi. And then this right over here, the antiderivative, this is going to be equal to minus 2 times the antiderivative of cosine of u. Well, that's just sine of u. Sine of u evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Well, sine of 2 pi is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So this whole thing is going to evaluate to 0. So we could say minus 0. And then we take the antiderivative of this right over here. The antiderivative of this is going to be, antiderivative of 1 half is 1 half u, 1 half u. And the antiderivative of 1 half cosine of 2u, well, if we had a 2 out front here, then that would be, that would be the derivative of sine of 2u. But we don't have a 2 out here, but we can add a 2. Let me actually write it this way. We can add a 2 right over here. We can add a 2 and then divide by a 2. We can add a 2. Let me, that's a little bit too confusing. Let me make it very clear. 1 half, 1 half cosine of 2u is equal to 1 half times 1 half, right, let me write it this way, is equal to 1 fourth times 2 cosine to you. These are the exact same quantities. And the reason why I wrote it this way is this is clearly, this is the derivative of sine of 2u. So when you take the antiderivative of this, it's the same thing as plus, do that same color, plus 1 fourth sine of 2u. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi. And you confer, confirm for yourself. You take the derivative of this, you do the chain rule, you get the 2 out front. 2 times 1 fourth gives you 1 half. And the derivative of sine of 2u with respect to 2u is cosine of 2u. Now, we need to evaluate this at 2 pi and at 0. When you evaluate it at 2 pi, you get have 1 half times 2 pi, which is pi. So this is plus pi, plus pi plus 1 fourth times sine of 2 times 2 pi, sine of 4 pi, that's just going to be 0. So this is going to evaluate to 0. And then minus 1 half times 0, and then 1 fourth sine of 2 times 0. This is all going to be 0 when you put 0 there. So this whole thing evaluated just to pi. And we're in the home stretch, at least for surface 2. And I'll switch back to surface 2's color now, now that we're near the end. So this, the, integral, uh, the surface integral for surface 2 is just going to be 1 half times 2 pi minus or sorry, minus 0 plus pi, so it's 1 half times 3 pi, which is equal to, which is equal to, we can have our drum roll, or I guess our mini drum roll, since we're not really done the entire problem right now, but it's equal to 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. So we're making pretty good headway. This was 0, and now this part right over here is 3 pi over 2. And in the next video, we will try to tackle surface 3.